important for us though today um, was the symbolism of gathering uh, the area's public safety professionals here to stand up against what's happening. Um, our voice in this debate, public safety workers, police and fire, um, for, for a number of reasons has been greater and louder than our actual numbers. Uh, for those of you, uh, police officers and firefighters who marched into that rotunda in the first few days know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you saw with your own eyes the overwhelming response we got from our citizens. Absolutely overwhelming. Those images are burned into my memory um, and will be until the day I die. Um, the image of teachers, uh, social workers, nurses, um, all students and care workers gathered together, welcoming us, looking around uh, and seeing tears streaming down people's faces. And it, it really, it was, a, it was an unbelievable moment for me and it really, it, it opened up a whole new door for me in terms of how I thought about, about the world. And I, I kept thinking, why, why is this occurring? You know, are they happy it's just because we brought a hundred people, you know, to a rally of several thousand? It, is it just, you know, we, we brought a, a good group here today? And, you know, why are the journalists writing articles about the police officers and firefighters coming out to, to join this? Um, I realize it's not about our numbers. It's clearly not about our numbers. Um, it's because of the unique position we occupy in society. Um, we're police officers and firefighters. Number one, I think people really were uh, impressed with the fact that we came out early, we came out hard, and we came out loud despite being exempt from this horrible legislation. We are also, uh, because of our positions, I, we occupy kind of a, a, a strange role here. Um, we are seen in some circles as the establishment, um, as working for the government, uh, particularly police officers, not, not as much firefighters, but we're all kind of lumped together sometimes. Um, and we're also seen, I think rightly, as the protectors of our society. So I think seeing us come out, both as potentially agents of the state, but also as the protectors of our citizens, really help energize and comfort people. And it's an opportunity that, that was, uh, we're very grateful for, and it's an opportunity we must not squander. Our numbers are small, but we must continue to stand up for what's right. This is no longer just about the stripping of workers' rights in this state. Uh, it's still about that, but it has gotten far worse since we came out in February and March. We're talking about the stripping of our kids of the right to a decent education. We're talking about stripping of environmental regulations, of uh, health care, uh, the great health care we enjoy in the state. Uh, this administration is attacking the very fabric of Wisconsin, and it's got to stop now. Yeah. Our citizens are entitled to a government that works for them a government that's, that's transparent. What we're seeing now is a government that scuttles around in the middle of the night, passing legislation that's hurting its citizens. At the same time, hundreds of millions of dollars is flooding out of our treasury into the hands of special interests. It's got to stop. The only analogy I can come up with in my brain, the mental picture I get when I view this administration, they are a marauding, conquering army. And they've come in, they have conquered, and now they are pillaging and dividing up the spoils of this state. Today is our day to say enough is enough. That's right. Yeah. We have fantastic speakers here today. I'm going to stop talking here. I'm going to also shorten my introduction so we can get everybody through. Because each of these speakers here, everyone in their own right, is a true warrior in the fight for the working people of this country. It's really it's amazing the talent we have here today. Um, we have some people who have come a long way to join us. Uh, Mark Sanders, President of the Ohio Professional Firefighters Union. against uh, their terrible legislation down there. Well done. Yeah. yeah. General President, General Chief President, General President.
president of the IAFF traveled a long way to be with us, another champion, and not just the rights of firefighters, but the rights of all working people. And we appreciate all of you. Uh, the only problem I've got now is that uh, every second I listen to Brian here, I'm thinking, I'm thinking we might have a gubernatorial candidate right here. <laughs> <laughs> About, we talked about mail and running too, and it's just a, I, it's a little shuffle. Who goes top on the chicken? Who goes second? But it's okay. At the end of the day, as long as I've got a candidate for governor of Wisconsin who is 100% committed to organized labor and the rights of workers, I'm going to be satisfied with that. Point. Now, I am way out of my league today, I gotta tell you, because uh, we got some gentlemen here who are going to talk about just how easy these fights are. <laughs> I, was, I was with Brother Sanders on November 8th of 2011, a historic day at the Ohio Firefighters Hall in Columbus, Ohio, and can I tell you something? Brian claims that firefighters and police officers in Wisconsin know how to party. <laughs> I just want to inform you, you have never been to a party like the one when you beat, not just beat, when you whip an anti-labor governor by a No, we are the best state in the union. <laughs> the only problem I've got with Ohio is they keep setting higher standards for us. I yeah. thought getting seven, eight hundred thousand signatures was enough. I didn't know we had to get 1.3 million. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. I didn't know we had to get 61 percent of the vote when we voted on Scott Walker. <laughs> Now, I want to also recognize a couple of people here tonight, or this afternoon. It feels like night. First off, uh, Officer Cindy Murphy from the Madison Cops. You know, we, we share something, and it's, I don't want anybody cry, getting soft on us here. Uh, my dad died two weeks ago. Cindy's dad died on Wednesday. And there's a lot of people, it's a, it hurts. It hurts to lose a loved one, and everybody in this room has lost a loved one. But I can tell you something. That line, don't mourn, organize, that is the most healing line imaginable. And Cindy's here today, and I am here today, because we fight for the legacy of our fathers and our mothers. I want to recognize sisters Diane Hesselbein and Melissa Sargent. Because if you have ever wondered what an effective and useful elected official looks like, <laughs> these two county supervisors, they went in the first week of Walker's bill and they passed a county board resolution that said Dane County stands with the rights of workers, no question. <laughs> And they walked into that Capitol the next day, and they were there every day, and Melissa Sargent even got her kids arrested to make them. <laughs> they wanted to do it. That's her son. He got busted for, speech, for using his First Amendment rights. recognize that we are in the presence of another elected official here. Now, 
I, some of you will remember that day when they were going to clear the Capitol. It was, I believe, Sunday night. We're all packed. In Let's just remember, the critical moment in this fight was when Brian and Joe and Malin and Jim stood with us on that Monday after Walker dropped the bomb and they said, we will not be divided. First they came for the factory workers. They blamed people that make cars in this country for having decent middle class wages. Then they passed trade deals that shipped 100,000 jobs out of this state and our tax revenue went down. And they just kept taking. And they just kept ripping us off. Well, I don't, you know, whether a governor passes a law that ends collective bargaining rights or whether they pass laws that ship jobs to China and Mexico, and I know you know this from Ohio as well, the result is the same. The tax base dwindles, people lose their health care, they lose their dignity, and then they came for you. And let's face it, the governor tried to divide you out of this, not because he loved you. <laughs> he doesn't love workers. <laughs> he did it because he thought he could get away with it and take some money from a couple unions that had some very misguided uh, leadership in this past election. But it didn't work. I'll tell you why it didn't work, because we actually love each other in this state enough to realize that this guy's a fraud. He and, he and Tanette, by the way, were on TV last night saying that they don't talk about politics in the governor's mansion. I just about choked. <laughs> the first thing they did when they went to the governor's mansion is they took that picture down. They took that picture down of the school children. Oh, I have news for you, Tanette and Scotty. I'll back that Mayflower truck up in the driveway there. Let's pack that crap up, put the picture of the children from Milwaukee back up above the mantle, and let's get them out of here. Yeah. There are a lot of other fights out there. I need you to stand with Madison teachers and Brother Matthews. We're going to try to privatize. They're, gonna, they're sending the first Trojan horse in to privatize Madison Public Schools. We will not give $26 million to a charter school unaccountable to the taxpayers without uh, union teachers. It's not going to happen in Madison. Call your school board members. Yeah. One more thing. Yeah. Our brothers and sisters in Manitowoc that work for Manitowoc Crane. They're doing the same thing to them in the private industry that Walker's doing. Next Saturday, there's a rally. Tell your friends, your neighbors, we need you there. Because it doesn't matter whether you work in the public sector or the private sector. Workers' rights are human rights, and you're the best. God bless you. Ohio that you might hear about. We spent uh, 
five days together on a bus, you talk about a thousand people in the state house. <laughs> five days together on a bus across Ohio is, is uh, quite an effort. But, you know, at the end of the day, when you, when you go town to town, meeting to meeting, and you keep it focused on what I have to do today to get those 540,000 signatures, whatever you need here in Wisconsin, it's possible. And with that possibility comes another possibility, and then another possibility. And then you, once again, who lit the fuse for Ohio, passed us the torch, we are now going to pass it back to you. Because if we could have a recall of the governor, which we can't in Ohio, we would have went right there because our members who are demographically Republican and Democrat, big slice down the middle, they were ready and asking how we do that. Those Fox TV watchers who started watching the Wisconsin firefighters and Wisconsin police officers and citizens of Wisconsin on MSN are now asking the people that maybe voted for this guy, how can we re now recall him? So an issue can spark a movement to take these overreaching, crazy politicians out of office. So let me tell you what's, what the possibilities are when you have a, a daunting task before you. How in the world in 60 days can we get this done? Well, 231,000 signatures in Ohio over 90 days. We're like, oh, how do we get that done? Well, you get it done by 1.2, 1,298,301 signatures over 90 days. You just keep plugging, and you keep plugging, and you keep plugging. Here's another number. 1,889,000 votes. 1,888,000 889,000 votes. We collect, we have, no one issue two. 2,145,000 2 votes. Our no one issue two had more votes than the election of the governor in Ohio. That's it. So, so when you are collecting these signatures and you are making a goal for yourself, I don't know what that is, I should have researched that. That's a pretty good goal to have more signatures than he got in the election because that really sends a signal to him. That really sends a signal. That goes back to the 2,500 votes in the one city that you know 